Hey, this is Ari, and in this video, I want to share with you a little clip from my much longer presentation all about the science around saunas. This was a presentation I did that I forget exactly how long it was. The full length version is 45 minutes or an hour or something like that. And uh, it's packed with content, but of course, modern world, people have short attention spans. So I wanted to break things down into little valuable chunks and go over some of the key elements of that presentation. And this is one of the clips that I wanna share with you. Um, saunas are incredibly powerful in terms of their ability to, as, as a hormetic stressor, in terms of their ability to stimulate adaptations in our body that ultimately confer uh, mitochondrial growth, mitochondrial biogenesis, neuroprotective effects, um, antidepressive effects, increased athletic performance, uh, and much, much more. Um, disease prevention, reductions in cardiovascular disease, neurological disease, all cause mortality. Saunas are an absolutely wonderful tool and are extremely effective also for helping you to increase your energy levels. I highly recommend them. And in this clip, you're going to find out a bit of the reason why I'm such a huge fan of saunas. So enjoy. And if you want to listen to the full length presentation, I also have an article associated with that. The links for that are down in the description below. Enjoy. So first of all, what are mitochondria? They are the energy generators in our cells. Now, if you are familiar with my work, you've heard me talk a lot about mitochondria. One of the big realizations that I had as I was digging into the science and creating the Energy Blueprint program and working with a lot of the, the top physicians and scientists in the world to create that program is I realized that mitochondria are really, really, really important. And um, working on your mitochondrial health is one of the most important things that you can do to improve your health, to improve your energy levels, to increase your longevity, and your resistance to disease. Mitochondria are ultimately, in my opinion, the secret key to more energy, to being lean, to protection from countless diseases, and to living to 100 and beyond. Now, I'm spending a lot of time on this particular one because mitochondria are really, really important. So how do saunas improve mitochondrial health and energy? First of all, they stimulate mitochondrial biogenesis, which is the creation of new mitochondria from scratch. Our, our cells can actually make new mitochondria um, and, and actually more mitochondria. They can also cause uh, your, your mitochondria to grow in size. In other words, sauna use can make bigger, stronger mitochondria that produce more energy. They can, sauna use can improve the antioxidant response element. This is the internal antioxidant uh, and detoxification system. Um, and when I said earlier that there's many misconceptions around oxidants and free radicals, one of the biggest misconceptions is that taking lots of exogenous or external antioxidants in pill form is a great way to extend longevity and uh, make you resistance to disease. And, and actually, we know very definitively from dozens of studies at this point that that is just not the case. But what does actually improve your resistance to stress and your longevity and your resistance to disease is building up your internal antioxidant response element, actually making the, the cellular antioxidant system stronger. And sauna use also increases autophagy and mitophagy, which is basically the cleanup of dysfunctional and damaged cell parts inside of your cells, as well as the cleanup and repair of damaged mitochondria. Again critical part of protecting yourself from disease and aging is having really strong, big, healthy mitochondria and lots of them. So a couple studies showing that um, sauna use enhances mitochondrial health. It makes your mitochondria bigger and stronger, can stimulate mitochondrial biogenesis, et cetera, et cetera. Screenshots here on the, on the video. So, Again, going back to what we talked about with hormesis earlier, basically what the modern world does is it takes big, healthy mitochondria and turns them into small, weak, damaged, dysfunctional energy generators. And having those small, weak, damaged, frail, fragile mitochondria in your cells, that accelerates the rate of aging and increases your risk, your risk of many, many diseases. 
uh, and decreases your, resi your resilience. So the modern anti-hormesis lifestyle that's lacking all these layers of hormesis that I talked about earlier directly acts on the mitochondria level to make your mitochondria weak, fragile, and small. And going deeper in this connection now between mitochondria and hormesis, hormesis affects the size and the number of your mitochondria and the strength of your mitochondria. Your resistance to stress, your resilience, and ultimately your resistance to disease is very much dependent on the health of your mitochondria. So I call this the, the resilience threshold. So if, you, if you're seeing on the screen now, if you're watching the video, uh, this is a little uh, image that I created to illustrate this concept. But basically, so if one has very few mitochondria and weak little fragile mitochondria in their cells, they have a very low capacity to adapt and respond in a healthful way to whatever stressors they're exposed to. Before they end up getting into stress overload and then basically pathology. Basically, you start to get symptoms, you start to get health problems, it starts to result in cell damage. So in other words, what a resiliency threshold is, is to, to basically to have a high resiliency threshold means that you have a high capacity to adapt and tolerate stressors without it overwhelming and damaging your system and contributing to disease and cell damage that's driving aging. Um, or just, you know, burnout and, and low stress tolerance, basically. So that ability to adapt without being damaged to the various stressors of life, and we're all being exposed to stressors all the time, not just psychological or emotional stressors, but toxins in our environment, um, which are pervasive, and we're all being exposed to them all the time, and, and many other types of stress in the modern world. That stress is always there. So the key question is, what is your resilience threshold? What is your capacity to adapt? And that resilience threshold is largely determined by the size, the health, and the strength of your mitochondria. So having big, powerful mitochondria and lots of them leads to a very high resilience threshold, ability to adapt and handle the stressors of life with ease, without being overloaded by them, without, without having your cells get damaged, and without experience, experiencing symptoms and disease, and ultimately increased aging and early death. Also, between the ages of 40 to 70, I want you to understand that people typically lose half of their mitochondrial capacity. And there's also probably a similar decline, though this hasn't been tested yet, uh, between the ages of 20 to 40. So we're losing, most people are losing as they age, uh, a huge amount of their mitochondria. Literally, you have mitochondria dying off. The ones that are still there are shrinking, shriveling, becoming uh, more fragile and frail. The, the key thing is, this doesn't have to happen. There's actually research showing that, you know, for example, in people who are extremely fit and exercise very frequently, intensely, they, this doesn't happen. They, they actually maintain their mitochondria. So that process, the presence of hormesis, that process of you know, hormetic stress being exposed to that and many layers of it, hopefully, not just exercise, um, is what stimulates your mitochondria to keep them big and strong and stimulates the body to create new mitochondria, mitochondrial biogenesis. So that is ultimately what is going to help you preserve your mitochondria and keep them big, strong, and healthy. And again, that, having big, strong, healthy mitochondria and lots of them is linked with the things we just talked about, high resilience threshold and ability to handle stress, as well as resistance to disease and slowing the aging process. So mitochondria are really, really important. One more layer to this story that I wanna mention. Um, again, the mitochondria are not just mindless energy generators, they are environmental sensors. And we know from uh, research done by Dr. Robert Navio's lab for mitochondria uh, and his work on something called the cell danger response, which is where the mitochondria basically sense that the body's under stress and under threat, and they decide to mostly turn off energy production and shift into defense mode. The ultimate 
you know, sort of subjective experience of that state is that you get fatigued as a result of that. When your mitochondria, which are the source of the energy that is being produced in your cells, and ultimately you are a collection of cells, so your energy and your experience of energy is largely a function of how much energy is being produced by your mitochondria. So when that's being shut down, when your mitochondria are going, hey, we're under threat, we're under stress, we're being overloaded, uh, you know, our, our resilience threshold is being overloaded by too much stress and too intensive stressors, they shut down energy production and they go into defense mode. So it's important to understand your mitochondria, again, are not just mindless energy generators, they are environmental sensors that are controlling gene expression. They're controlling whether your cells are in energy mode or are trying to defend against threat. And if they're more in cellular defense mode, then you experience that as fatigue. I'll give you a, a simple example of this so you can understand it on a practical level. When you get sick, when you catch a cold or a flu, what's one of the biggest symptoms of that situation? Fatigue. You get tired. You want to sleep, you want to rest, you don't feel like running around and doing all the things you normally do. And the reason why is because your mitochondria are sensing a threat, the presence of a, a pathogen, a microbial infection, and they're shutting down energy production, uh, in, which is an intelligent response, by the way, and shifting more into cell defense mode and out of energy mode. So this is one of the biggest factors behind low energy levels and chronic fatigue is that the mitochondria have basically shifted more into defense mode. So how do you get your mitochondria out of that mode? Well, there are many, many different factors there. You certainly have to address the underlying factors that are, that are triggering that defense mode in the first place. But one of the biggest keys to recovery is that you need to build up the health, the strength, the resilience of your mitochondria. Yes, that's hard if, you know, for people who are dealing with really severe chronic fatigue who are like, you know, uh, they, they can't do any physical activity whatsoever. They're basically bedridden. Um, their bodies are exquisitely sensitive and intolerant to hormetic stress. But you have to understand that it, when they don't do any sort of hormetic stress, the body just gets more and more fragile and more and more sensitive to any sort of stress. The resilience threshold just keeps going down and down and down. So you do have to, at some point, uh, start to build this back up, start to build up your mitochondrial health and your resilience threshold. It just needs to be done uh, in people who are, are really ill, really bedridden, severely fatigued. It needs to be done in a very, very systematic, very slow and cautious way uh, in the initial few weeks and few months. Um, in, in baby steps, essentially. Um, but again, avoidance of doing those things is not a good route to recovery. So again, I just want to emphasize, I know we've spent a long time on this one factor of mitochondrial health, but this is really one of the biggest things to understand about ultimately, you know, all these other benefits that I'm going to cover. Why does sauna use actually translate into resistance to various diseases and all kinds of health benefits and increased energy and all that stuff. Most of those effects actually revolve around how sauna use affects mitochondrial health, how hormesis affects mitochondria, and ultimately how that translates into, you know, all these different gene expression pathways that are, that are increasing resilience to stress and resistance to disease and um, are decreasing the rate of, of cell damage and aging and so on. It largely revolves around how hormesis affects your mitochondria. So really important concept to understand all this, but bigger, stronger mitochondria means more resilience, slow, slower aging, and lots more energy. So mitochondria are very, very important. Hey, this is Ari. I hope you enjoyed this video. And one more thing before you go. Actually, two more things. One is if you enjoyed this particular little clip, uh, the link to the full length podcast is in the description down below. So make sure to check that out. Also, one more thing. Let me ask you a question. What if I could show you how to double your energy levels and dramatically improve your brain function, reducing your anxiety and depression to a degree on par with antidepressant drugs, but without the side effects. Sound pretty interesting? 
Well, there are in fact numerous compounds that can do this, that have been shown to do this. And I'll, I'll take you through just a few of these very briefly. One of them is rhodiola rosea. And this has been shown in studies, uh, rhodiola rosea extract in people with stress-related fatigue and exhaustion to cut their levels of fatigue and brain fog in half in less than a month. Just this one compound. There's another compound uh, in my formula Energenesis called NT factor phospholipids that's been shown to help repair mitochondrial membranes and mitochondrial health to the level of healthy 29 year olds taking people with deteriorated mitochondria who are over the age of 65, restoring it to the level of healthy 29 year olds. Um, and that has been shown in numerous studies in various types of chronic fatigue, aging associated chronic fatigue, obesity related chronic fatigue, chronic fatigue syndrome to increase energy levels by 30 to 45% in the span of four to 12 weeks, depending on the specific study. So dramatic improvements in a very, very short period of time. Uh, two more compounds that are amazing, I highly recommend that are in my formula, Ultra Brain, along with Rhodiola rosea. Saffron extract, this has been shown to increase levels of, um, improve your mood, I should say, and decrease levels of depression on par with fluoxetine, which is Prozac. And uh, not only that, but with fewer side effects. It's much safer and much less likely to cause negative effects than antidepressant drugs are. Acetyl-L-carnitine is another compound that's been shown to dramatically improve brain health in older adults. It also improve energy levels in older adults with chronic fatigue by between 40 to 50% in just the span of two to, th to four months. And uh, the last thing I'll mention here is acetyl-L-carnitine has also been compared to antidepressant drugs and been shown, like saffron, to be as effective as antidepressant drugs in combating depression, but without the harmful side effects that so often occur with the drugs. So this is just a small uh, sampling of the over 35 compounds that are in my formulas, Energenesis and UltraBrain, that are all proven to dramatically improve energy levels, mitochondrial health and brain health and much, much more. Uh, and I highly recommend that you go check these out. If you're struggling with depression or anxiety or brain fog, if you're struggling with stress-related ex exhaustion and burnout, if you're struggling with chronic fatigue, go check out these formulas, give them a shot. I promise you are gonna be blown away by the results and like I said, the science has already proven that these things work. So you don't have to just take my word for it. Uh, there's lots of research to support that. And I'll even link to some of that research down below so you can verify everything that I just said for yourself. So the links to those studies will be in the description for this video uh, down below. So check them out. Uh, check out the formulas on the energyblueprint.com. Again, uh, Energenesis is the mitochondrial formula and Ultra Brain is our brain formula. Check them out, try them out, and I think you're going to be blown away by the results. Thanks so much, and I'll talk to you again soon.